G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. We are more or less at the mid-season point. We are a little bit past it. We're in the midst of some buy rounds. I thought this would be a good opportunity to fire up a bit of a mid-season ladder prediction. And it is tricky, I gotta say. Like looking at the ladder, I feel so uncertain about some teams that I had previously locked into my top eight or potentially top six, top four. And equally, I felt pretty confident that certain teams wouldn't have played finals this year that are now starting to look like they are every bit a finals quality team. So this is a really awkward time to do a ladder prediction, but perhaps the best possible time because it's a little bit of fun, a little bit of intrigue about the second half of the year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a crack at plotting all 18 teams in order of how I think they're going to finish this season and give you a prediction as well on some of the awards this year. Before I do, however, it would really mean a lot to me if you considered subscribing to this channel. We've got about 48% of people who watch my videos regularly over the last month that have hit subscribe. I'd love to get that at least to 50. I would love to get it higher than that, but at the moment we'll lower our eyes to 50%. If you're enjoying the content, you want to see more footy stuff, please consider subscribing. Thanks. All right, so as we so often do, we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up in the words of Drake, not really. Um, okay, so the bottom three teams, I'm going to be boring here and go with the same order it is currently. So we've got North Melbourne in 18th, we've got Richmond in 17th, West Coast in 16th. To be as specific as possible, I think North will win three games this year. Richmond and West Coast probably around the five win mark with Richmond's percentage being a little bit worse than West Coast's. And despite recent results, despite the fact that North just beat West Coast, the fact that Richmond just beat the Crows, I still think these are the three bottom teams and in that specific order. I think North Melbourne with their young team, they will surprise a few teams. You know, I expect them to beat West Coast again when they play at Blunston and they'll win at least one other in my opinion, putting them in the ballpark of the last couple of seasons with three wins. Richmond, again, they're just looking a little bit improved. If they can stabilize their injuries, they'll continue to bob up and win the occasional game. I do wonder with, with the team like Richmond just so badly needing good draft picks, whether the whether the focus in the second half of the year, potentially if they have a little bit more availability with players, that allows them to you know continue to focus on giving games to the youth. I, I still just don't see them leapfrogging West Coast, who on their worst days are terrible. On their best days, they're actually pretty damn good. And I would imagine there's going to be enough good days throughout the rest of the year to just keep them in that same spot. So I've St. Kilda probably taking the next spot in my bottom four. And it's it was tough between them and Adelaide, who I have in 15th. And this is just a slight flip of what the current ladder actually represents. So I think there's a gap between these two sides and the next group of teams currently. And that's just my opinion right now. But I think we've seen enough to be able to extrapolate to some extent. I think St. Kilda's best form we are a fair bit removed from. And they've won two games most recently against West Coast and Gold Coast. And they're still in those wins, signs of some game plan issues. I don't know. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world if St. Kilda, you know, take pick four to the draft. Equally with Adelaide, you know, two sides here in Adelaide and St. Kilda who have well and truly fallen short of expectations. Adelaide do at least have the possibility of, you know, bobbing up and beating some teams at Adelaide Oval. You know, they have a knack for beating Port Adelaide. They've got another showdown later this year. I think these two sides might meet at Adelaide Oval. And at the moment, I would tip Adelaide. So on that basis, that's why I've got the Crows just a little bit higher. So... This is where it gets really tricky for me. And I think, I know this is possibly going to be unpopular, but I've got Gold Coast going to 13th. The current position is 9th. And I just feel like this, this form of beating teams at home and losing away is not sustainable enough to get really close to playing finals. And I will trot out the same tired cliche about Gold Coast, but I just feel like as the season wears on with a young side, I just don't see them having the legs to really push close to finals when you consider the quality of teams that are above them. Maybe I have this wrong. I, I might. As for them having a young list, like I think if you run a general mean average over their age and experience, it's not too bad. But when you look at their core contributors, who their best players are, they're still pre-prime, like Raul Anderson and Flanders. Miller's probably in his prime. Ben King's probably just getting to his prime, equal in the Coleman right now as it stands. But I find it easier to, to make an argument against Gold Coast than I do with some of these other teams. I do have the Bulldogs in 12th. Another team that's, you know, their best has been pretty good and their worst has been, you know, pretty average. And I think them sitting towards the bottom end of this group competing for finals probably does make sense. For the record, I mean, they sit currently 11th, so it's not massively different to where they currently sit on the ladder. I just don't feel the same confidence with the dogs to really push up and make finals that they could. They could. But this is the way I see it. I've got Melbourne in 11th. They currently sit 10th. I'm a little bit worried about the Ds. And I, I think petrarch has got a rib injury. I'm not too sure how long that's going to rule him out for. But I just feel like there's this malaise and a little bit of lack of confidence at the Demons. And they need to snap out of it soon. But I just don't have that same faith. I mean, their run of form has been pretty poor over the last five. 
They've only won one game. That's true of other teams as well. This video is brought to you proudly in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. Now, the idea of starting therapy may be a little bit daunting. There are some people who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with the face-to-face -face interaction. And in some cases as well, you might not feel like you're gonna be matched with the right therapist for you because they might not live in your area. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because you can set up your therapy sessions either through phone call, video, video chat, or if you prefer text messaging, whatever's the most comfortable for you, it's super convenient. To get started in the process, all you have to do is click either the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. It takes you to a questionnaire and you fill that out so that they can assess your specific needs. In most cases, they will then match you with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then book your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. And if you find that you're matched with someone that isn't quite the right fit, you do have the ability to switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think BetterHelp might be the right fit for you, like I said, you go to the link in the description or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Now clicking that link does support the channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help. But the actual, you know, eye test of what I've seen from the Demons does really concern me. And I think with a competitive top eight finals race this year, I've lost faith in the Demons recapturing this season. Is their window closed? I'm not going to make that claim. I don't think it necessarily has to be. And to be fair to them, they have been taking their draft picks. Their list is not you know, in terrible shape. I just don't think finals are on the cards this year for the Ds. The Brisbane Lions I have, are making a late season resurgence to finish 13th. Now, they do have their injury concerns themselves, but I think you know, a lot, a lot, across a lot of key stats, Brisbane are still playing okay footy. It's just that sometimes they play pretty average footy, which sounds a little bit redundant. But interestingly, like I was running some stats and they're the number one team for expected score, or at least close to, which is probably a fairly good indicator that they've played some decent footy this year. And we know the star power that they do have. And it's a mature list, which means, you know, they might run out of season pretty well. So I predict them making a late charge. But again, with the glut of teams, Vying for eighth spot right now, I don't think Brisbane's going to be able to make up the ground. Ninth spot is going to be my most unpopular call, and I'm so sorry, Essendon fans. I have you just slightly outside the top eight. Here's my justification. I feel like there's some teams that are red hot right now that are just going a little bit better, but the percentage is the main reason for it. I think we're going to have a lot of teams that might just finish on the same amount of points, and Essendon's percentage is 100%. And if you compare that to Fremantle, Fremantle, have they played better up to this point? No, I think Essendon has been the better team up until this point, but Fremantle's probably in this runner form right now that is kind of compelling. And I don't want to have you know too much recency bias, but you look at a percentage of 121% versus a percentage of 100%. Both teams have also had a draw. I think these two teams could finish equal on points. And Essendon's percentage with a proven inability to convert inside 50s to scores, they've got structural issues. I just don't know if I see it for Essendon this year. And I could be wrong on that. I don't actually feel good about it. This is the one I don't feel good about, but there is a glut of teams five for eighth. And I you know, leave out the side with the worst percentage. I have Hawthorne surging into seventh spot here. I think they've really turned a corner. I don't think you need me to tell you that if you've been paying attention at all to this season. The form from Hawthorne since round five has really made all of us stand up and take notice. And there's probably only a handful of teams right now that I would tip over Hawthorne if they were playing Hawthorne in current form. Now, again, young side, I realize that the arguments against the Gold Coast Suns are also there for Hawthorne, but Hawthorne's top form has been better. And their one loss in their last seven games has been a game that they probably should have won against Port Adelaide, who are fairly hard to beat at Adelaide Oval for the most part. There's a clear home ground advantage there. I have a feeling that Hawthorne will surge enough. They could drop off a little bit and their percentage also does work against them at 88%. But I do think I'm going to back Hawthorne in to get an extra win over teams like Fremantle and Essendon or at least an extra two points as those two sides have a draw if I'm not mistaken. So then we have Geelong stabilizing in sixth spot. Now, Geelong's season has been a tale of two halves. There's no doubt about that. They started, what, 7-0, and then they lost four of their last five with one win over Richmond, which is half a performance, and albeit a massive second half, but still concerning. But I think if you still look at the established talent in that team and you know some new faces bobbing up and playing really well, Max Holmes comes to mind. He's not a new face, but I think he's really taken his game to the next level. Guys like Bruin and Conway, you know, I think Geelong will do enough, again, with some home games at GMHBA to, to stabilize. I'd be surprised if they fall away entirely. 
And you know, I'm not super confident about it, but the GMHBA factor makes me think they'll bank enough wins to just crawl into sixth spot, but I'm not sure if I see them as a, a serious finals contender. So then we've got Port Adelaide who are currently fourth on the ladder. I have them dropping down to fifth on the basis of one other team having a really good second half of the year, which I'll get to. But Port Adelaide's home ground advantage makes me confident enough that they'll beat the teams they're expected to at home for the most part. I think they're another team who need to bridge the gap between their best and their worst. So there's been some good performances this year and then you know they'll have a game like the showdown where they don't really fire a shot. And again, I'm not really sure I consider them a serious contender, but you consider the teams around them is that there's marks against every team in some capacity. But I think Port Adelaide will accumulate enough wins to finish in fifth spot. So now we've got a team surging into fourth spot and I'm big on these guys. They're currently eighth on the ladder and the GWS Giants, I still think might have a late season surge because they are late season specialists and a team that is mature and you know started the season really well. I think they're in a rut of form right now that's hard to back. But if you factor in like where they were this time last year, I think that the Giants will be priming themselves for a big second half of the year. Maybe they've been undergoing some heavy training loads, preparing for the end of the season. We've seen when they do make finals, they generally win at least one, or if they win one, they might win two or something like that. But either way, the Giants are late season specialists and I've still got them sliding into my top four, which might be one of my more bold calls in this prediction. I've got Collingwood who are currently sixth up into third. I if I'm not mistaken, if they win the next game, they'll be up into second, depending how other results fall. Again, it's messy right now with the buy rounds, but when you consider the form since round three or round two, whenever they lost to St. Kilda, they went on this big run. They've had one loss against the Bulldogs. Considering the injuries that they have sustained, I think their system has held up really well. I think they've been able to cycle in new players and play well, and there's a lot of upside there with Collingwood. And as it currently stands with their best players to come back, or a lot of them, they're still in a pretty good position with regard to ladder position. So I have Collingwood shooting up on the basis that I just don't quite have the same faith in some of these other teams. I think Collingwood's at least the third best team in the comp. I'll just show you the top two because it's pretty obvious who it is at this point, but we've got Sydney in top spot and Carlton in second. Sydney, that this one's most obvious case to make. I think they're so far ahead of the comp right now. I do realize that's right now, and you'd be foolish to suggest that they won't, you know, get humbled at some point or multiple times throughout the season. But I think, you know, with one loss at this point in the season and to Richmond of all teams, no disrespect, but we all know that's a massive outlier. They've played really well against other contenders. I think they are clearly the team to beat 149%. Um, they can drop a few games and still finish first. So Carlton in second is probably the other bold call here. Again, they're second on the ladder currently. I know there's buy rounds and stuff, but I think they're best 22 quality. And again, a team that's proven that they can win close games and play deep into seasons, etc. I guess I just feel that now Carlton's, I think, shaken off a few injury concerns. They're in pretty good form right now. They won four of their last five with one loss to Sydney. It's hard to bet against them. So I think there's three clear top teams there in my opinion, and that is the way I see it shaping up. So to finish off this prediction, I'm gonna give you my grand final. So at the start of the year, I predicted a Sydney GWS grand final. I might double down on that. I might double down on that. It'd be brave. That would be first versus what is currently eighth. I think the most likely one is probably Sydney Collingwood, but let me double down on her prediction because if I get it right, I will look fantastic. And I do just have a feeling about the Giants. So we've got Sydney probably beating GWS in the grand final as it currently stands. Brownlow medal is interesting. Brownlow medal is interesting. You know, there's, there's a lot of talk about Heaney um, and that is an absolutely like really strong shout if you did go that route. I think Chad Warner's also had a fantastic year. Do they still votes off each other? I actually might throw Nick Dacos into this mix purely because I don't think he'll have the same competition for votes. Now, it depends if, you know, I think he's got a shin injury as I record this. He should be back by next week. I'm not too sure. All that stuff's important considering having missed two games last year, he probably would have won it. So on the basis that Heaney and Warner might steal votes from each other, I think the form that Dacos has been in over the last month or so, I think he's been banging three vote games for a few weeks now. Let me just say Nick Dacos to throw a different one out there other than you know someone like an Isaac Heaney. Rising Star is an interesting shout as well because uh, obviously with uh, Harley Reid and Sam Darcy getting suspended, I am going to back in George Wardlaw to win it now. I think he's fantastic against West Coast. I think what he's doing as an inside mid in his second season should be viewed more favorably than some of the more outside types. So I think George Wardlaw has been a star. If he can stay fit, he'd probably be my vote. So let's back in George Wardlaw. Anyway, guys, can't wait to get slaughtered for this, um, but it's always good fun. I'm so sorry, Essendon fans. I know you're going to not like this, but we'll see. We'll see. Leave some comments. And, uh, you know, if I get proven right at the end of the year, I will go through and I'll start hearting them all. <laughs> Just kidding. Let me know in the comments what you believe, what are your thoughts. And uh, for now, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. I did not forget the common medal. How dare you suggest that? 
Coleman medal prediction. Um, you've got King and Kerno both on 38 goals at the moment with Wardman in third. On the basis that I tipped Gold Coast to fall away a little bit at the back end of the year, I think Kerno's probably got the best chance. Um, I'd love to say Waterman gets close. He just he, He's kind of in the team for a month and then comes out for a week. Um, it's kind of been a tale of his whole career. So I think he'll go close, but nah, I'll go Charlie Kerno for Coleman. Thanks, gonna edit this, bye.